This recorded training session will deal with Unit E of the School Bus Driver's Training Manual. I've chosen to start here because this section is without question the most important part of the entire training time, and you will understand why that is true in just a few moments. This will be part one of a two-part session. It will not be totally exhaustive and complete, but it will give us all a very good idea of the extent of completing a very important task. For you who are new drivers in training, please do not be discouraged by the wealth of information that you will find in these two sections or any other section. Please understand that training is a process. Give it time and I assure you that you will not only be well schooled, but you will be quite confident. After all, is said and done, you will be indeed confident. So just a word of encouragement to stay the course. During this recorded session, please jot down any questions, and if you might have, and we will consider them at the end of this section. There are any number of horror stories pertaining to the unsafe operation of school buses. Things can happen. But more things happen than need to happen. Approximately 26 million children ride the school bus to school and back home again each school day. That's a lot of precious cargo to be concerned with. The school bus driver plays an extremely important place in the lives of these children. The school bus driver is first person to greet the students in the morning and he or she is the last person to send them back into their homes in the afternoon or evening. The driver is the first person to initiate a line of defense for each child riding the bus. The driver begins the student's day with safety in mind, even when that may be the furthest thing from your passengers' minds. The wise and conscientious school bus driver will place the safety of his riders as the paramount concern among all concerns. So here's a question for you. What then should be the first step a driver should take to assure the safety of each and every child on board on a daily basis? Think about it. Would it be getting a good night's rest? Would it be staying drug and alcohol free? Would it be in keeping current on school bus local requirements? Although all of these things might be true and important, the state of Pennsylvania teaches that the first step is in making sure the vehicle you are driving is indeed safe to drive. So let's see what this pre-trip inspection is all about. The pre-trip inspection may find problems that could cause a breakdown or a crash. That's the whole purpose of the inspection. We must do all that we can to avoid anything that might cause the risk of danger to our passengers. A breakdown not only delays delivery, but it puts the passengers in a position of having to be on the bus longer than what may be acceptable. This leads to additional problems and concerns that could easily be avoided simply by completing a pre-trip inspection. Beyond that, an unnoticed bulge on the front tire or a soft tire could cause a tire blowout, which could lead to loss of control, which could lead to an accident causing physical injuries. It is therefore very critical that a pre-trip inspection be conducted prior to each trip. Of course, a conscientious owner-operator will do all that he or she can do to assure that each vehicle is in the best operational condition as possible. Regular service intervals will be conducted at the bus garage to check for potential mechanical and operational issues. The bus mechanic 
will give his utmost attention to regular maintenance items, which are usually based on mileage. While doing regular maintenance, the mechanic will be observant to notice anything worn or torn or in need of replacement. However, the school bus driver sits in the best position to catch problems early. The driver knows best how the bus handles, the way the bus drives, the way the bus sounds. These are all areas unfamiliar to the mechanic, but most familiar to the respective driver. As a driver, you should report any unusual noises, any vandalism, or any operational issues. This requires a driver that is astute, as well as diligent, in operational awareness. It is important to understand that a person is to take pride in his or her appointment as a school bus driver. Own your bus as if it were your own expensive investment. This will greatly reduce the chances for issues that could lead to driver suspension, probation, or even dismissal. You should never operate a vehicle that is not running properly, that is unsafe in any way to drive or without the proper onboard equipment and paperwork. Be certain to complete your pre-trip on a regular and frequent basis. If necessary, obtain a pre-trip inspection sheet to not only help you complete a full and proper inspection, but to also be a ready history, a record that could be presented to the authority should something happen. These are relatively inexpensive and can be easily purchased online. Also, to ensure a thorough pre-trip inspection is completed, you should develop a routine. Consider the following sequence of coverage. Do an overview of the bus as you approach the vehicle. Look at the bus. Has it been vandalized in some way? Check for leaning. Did a tire go flat? Check for leaks or fluid puddles under the bus. This could be evidence that a hose may have sprung a leak. Consider the texture and color of the fluid puddle. Report your descriptive findings to the mechanic. Move along to checking the engine compartment. You will not only need your pre-trip checklist, but you will want to carry a rag or paper towels for checking fluid levels, cleaning mirrors, windshield, or the dash area. Glass cleaner and a disinfectant spray can go a long way in properly preparing your bus for the route. Keep gloves handy for the dirty work. As a side note, do not arrive when it's time to leave. Arrive early. Plan to warm up your bus in cold weather and allow at least 15 minutes to conduct a proper pre-trip. Acquire a different school vehicle if your inspection warrants it. Never move the vehicle until you are certain it is safe to do so. Be certain that the parking brake is set and the keys are in your pocket so that no one starts the engine while you are doing an inspection under the hood. Unlatch the hood straps and raise the hood. Check everything under the hood. This would include belts, hoses, electrical wiring, and connections. Be prepared to thoroughly cover all the components under the hood including the air compressor, power steering pump, and water pump. Oh, and don't forget to check the blades on the fan, too. And remember to check the oil level as well. This is what an oil dipstick may look like from the top. Pull it out. Wipe the stick clean before checking the actual oil level on the stick. If the engine required additional oil, 
this would be the place to put oil into the engine. But just a word of sincere caution. There are different types of school buses. Therefore, the locations of the oil filler cap and dipstick may not be the same. Consult with a supervisor or shop maintenance personnel for assistance in loading, locating these items. It is critical that the fluids being added are the correct fluids. Some school bus owner operators prefer that you refrain from adding engine fluids. Simply let the mechanic know that the fluid level is low. On your belts under the hood, look for dry rot. Look to see if they are frayed, cracked, loose, or even missing. There should be no more than one half to three quarters of an inch movement when you pull on the belts at the center between the pulleys. Many drivers carry a bottle of washer fluid with them in the storage compartment of the bus. Each bus will be different, but know and learn the other fluids to be checked under the hood, such as the transmission fluid being pointed out here. Other fluids include power steering, hydraulic brake, and coolant level fluids. Again, and in most cases, the bus garage mechanic or the owner of the bus will care for most of the fluids under the hood. The bus driver usually is more of a reporter rather than a problem solver. After you are done under the hood, I recommend you proceed around the vehicle in a counterclockwise manner, checking not only the bus part components, but also checking for body damage and anything out of the ordinary. Do a complete and thorough walk around the outside of the bus. If you can see it, check it. Notice that even the safety inspection stickers should be checked for their presence as well as the appropriate inspection date. As you can see, there are numerous items on just the left side of the bus to check for safety reasons. Here are some things to check at the front of the bus, including several mirrors and lights. Don't forget the wipers. Here are some things to check on the left side of the bus. Be sure to check the drive shaft, drive shaft hangers, and exhaust pipe too underneath the bus. Move on to the battery box. Make certain the door is free to open and close and that the latch works properly to secure the battery compartment door. Check that cables are securely attached to each battery post. You should not be able to move the cables on the respective posts with your hand. Check for signs of cable damage, cuts, or shorts. Confirm that the batteries are secure to the compartment and that nothing is loose or shifting around. It goes without saying that the condition of the tires are very important. Irregular tire wear can be spotted early when tires are checked daily. Blowouts are not only frightening, but can also result in loss of vehicle control and potential injuries. Blowouts can result in accidents, inconvenience, lost time, and increased cost. It is required that the front tires be virgin or new tires only. Recap tires are not allowed on the front axle. Furthermore, the minimum tire tread depth is 4 30 seconds of an inch for the front axle. The rear duals can be recap tires, and the minimum tread depth for the back tires is 2 30 seconds of an inch. Worn tires create balance and alignment issues as well. If lug nuts are exposed, ensure they are tight and secure. Confirm inflation is acceptable. Check valve stem for wear, leakage, and being crack 
free. As you can see, there are numerous items on just the left side of the bus to check for safety reasons. There are several items to check on the back of the bus as well. The hole in the bumper is acceptable for the projection of the tailpipe. However, the tailpipe cannot protrude more than two inches beyond the face of the bumper. Otherwise, it is considered unsafe and will not pass school bus safety inspections. Be sure to open the rear door. Make certain that the door is fully operational with no restrictions. The hinges must be in good repair. The seal around the inside of the door must be intact and in good repair. The door handle should be free to move and latch the door securely. Remember, it is illegal for the rear door of a school bus to be locked when passengers are on board. The right side of the bus does have some differences that you will not find on the left side of the bus. For example, there is the fuel door. Open the fuel door and confirm that the fuel cap is secure. Check to confirm that there are no fuel leaks and that the fuel door and or fuel cage is not detached or hanging loose from the frame. So again, just to reiterate, check some things underneath, especially as it has to do with the fuel. Check the cap to make sure it is secure. Check underneath the bus to make sure that the fuel tank is not leaking and is secure and that the fuel cage around the fuel tank is secure as well. Here is an overall view of items on the right side of the bus. Check for functional access step on the rearward side of each front tire. It is in the area of the red arrow shown here. So this completes the first section of the school bus pre-trip inspection, covering most of the items on the outside of the bus. Again, it is incomplete, but additional videos, website links, and hands-on time will offer a thorough understanding of how to properly complete a school bus pre-trip inspection. Let's consider some additional miscellaneous information by way of some quiz questions. What is the maximum allowable length of a school bus according to the Department, Pennsylvania Department of Transportation? 72 feet, 45 feet, 42 feet, 38 feet. How long must a school bus be and not any longer? Well, the correct answer is 45 feet. How many times in any given year does each and every school vehicle receive a safety inspection? This doesn't matter if it's a van or a school bus. If it has a school vehicle sign on it, it needs to be inspected how many times in any given year? Well, if it's a van, it'll be your two, two time inspection. But if it's a school bus, school buses are actually inspected a third time. So the correct answer is three times a year, twice by a Pennsylvania Certified School Bus Safety Inspector and once by the Pennsylvania Department of Transportation. What type of fuel does a school bus run on? Diesel fuel, gasoline, propane, any of these. And of course, it's not only any of these, but it could be other things as well. So they're always developing and manufacturing new things on school buses through the years. And maybe someday, somewhere, there'll be a dependable electric school bus or perhaps one that runs on water. Who knows? 
The frame of a school bus is to be inspected during the pre-trip for signs of repair, welds, cracks, and holes that were not put there by the manufacturer. Is this true or false? The answer is true. Frames are to be inspected. And they cannot be repaired, cannot be welded, cannot have any holes drilled in, in them other than what was put there by the maker of the vehicle. How far behind the bus can the blind spot extend? 200 feet, 600 feet, 10 feet, or 400 feet? Well, the blind spot can actually extend 400 feet beyond the rear of the bus. So this completes the first part of our pre-trip inspection. We have dealt primarily with the items on the outside of the bus, starting with our look, starting with the leaks and the leaning of the bus, and progressing under the hood and then completely encircling the bus. So that completes session number one of our pre-trip.